Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to show you how to use No Query, which is a uh, part of Breakpoints, which allows you to output a version of your style sheets without media queries at all. And it's incredibly easy to set up. In fact, uh, with the way Omega is already, let me get rid of this. Okay, with the way that Omega is already, we don't have to really do anything because they've already included a noqueries.scss, which compiles to a noqueries.css that you can see up here. And you can see what it does is it sets two variables, breakpoint no queries true and breakpoint no query fallbacks true. And then it also imports our styles. So what it does is it sets these two variables to true imports all the styles and then runs, right? So how it does that is based off of what these two variables are doing. So this breakpoint no queries true is what's telling SAS to, hey, in this file, don't render your media queries. Just, just don't render them, but render everything that's in the media queries. So if we were to remove this line, it would effectively not uh, it would it would cause this to not work right the way that we intended it to Now what's the second line this? Uh, breakpoint no query fallbacks So what this breakpoints no query fallbacks variable will do will actually give you the option of adding fallbacks to your uh, Media query so instead of just rendering it without a media query it could render it with an additional class so if you're using something like modernizer or something then you could render it with a an additional class that didn't exist there so uh the easiest way to illustrate that will be to use an example straight out of the breakpoint wiki right so they have basically a variable touch that's saying uh it's going to be equal to pointer course and then comma we have no hyphen query and then space dot touch so basically once we use this touch variable in our our media query it's going to say okay when the when the when you're using touch uh, not only have the media query exist but when media queries shouldn't exist uh, exactly when we have a no query, assign it the ver or the class of touch ahead of it. So now if we save this, right, um, let's check out some stuff with our CSS. If you look at our no query dot CSS, um, besides these app media, which is, these are just, uh, just an FYI, these are just debugging things, so ignore them. You'll notice that it's not outputting our media queries, right, but what it is outputting is just our CSS that doesn't belong in media queries. So for example, if we look at um, this page, right, it's not getting the desktop styles, right? It's just getting the margin zero. What we want to see happen is we want to see inside of uh, L page, we want to see a width of whatever this is supposed to be and um, a width of whatever this is supposed to be, I guess it's 44 M's and then a width of the 70 M's that the desktop is going to be. And it should be just straight up removing these so we'd be seeing two widths defined there, but it's not doing that. So what we need to do is we need to say that no query is true. To do that, all we need to say is comma true. And then likewise here we can say comma true and then down here comma true and comma true okay now that's good if we come to our no query css the uh bit of code that we we're looking for last time is actually there now so it says l page uh not only do we have this but you can see it's margin 44 m and then it gets overwritten to margin 70 m so when you have a browser like internet explorer or something it's going to see that this width is overriding this width and the page will be the correct width for a desktop layout. Now that's if you're building it mobile first, which I assume a lot of you are. And uh, so that is the no query. What happens if we want to use our 
our, our fallback, right? So let's take one of these, and we're just gonna say that um, that this page only gets the desktop width. Actually, let's say on touch devices only, we're gonna say include break point, and then now we can just pass the variable touch. Actually, I'm gonna move this variable that I put in our no query dot CSS or SCSS. Where is that? I have, I'm going to move this right here, this touch variable. I'm going to throw this into our grid. Otherwise, this mix in won't see this. Okay. We're going to say breakpoint touch background is going to be blue. Okay. So check this out and what it's going to do in our CSS no query that CSS. What we're going to get is we're not only going to get an L page with these widths, but we're also going to get one that says if the document has a class of dot touch, then L page will have a background of blue, and therefore uh, whatever system we're using to give our body of the site a class of touch with touch screen phones or whatever, uh, basically we'll make it so we can set a class here to define specific things like that when we need to. Now this is just a fallback, so it's cool. So not only do we have a responsive grid, but we also have a no, uh, no query CSS style sheet that's going to get shown to older versions of IE that cannot handle media queries. Great, so hopefully by now you're starting to see the awesome things that these SaaS extensions could do for your workflow and the total value they add to building websites like this. I mean, really, we have hardly any lines of code here and we're doing so much. Uh, it's just really amazing. Um, now keep in mind that this is not exactly how I would structure my code normally. We've been talking about, you know, there's all sorts of different ways you can do stuff. So in here, we just said, you know, breakpoint tab true with this tab. You could also move these statements outside of uh, L page and then have L page wrap this. Um, you could have all your media queries in one spot. You could keep your media queries with your layouts. You could keep your media queries um, with, your, with your components. Basically, whatever makes sense to you works. And as long as it is structured in a way that is going to make sense for others, that works too. Great, so that should be everything you need to know to get started really working on your grid. And in the next couple of videos, we're gonna talk about some cool stuff. We're gonna get into uh, uh, more advanced things you can do with breakpoint and singularity. We're gonna talk about what happens if you wanna use a different grid framework, like uh, a different SAS-based grid framework like Suzy. And then we're gonna talk about layouts after that building layouts, creating layouts, modifying them, whatever you want, extending them. Uh, so keep watching. We have a lot more videos planned. It's going to get really awesome. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. Hit us up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts. Thanks for watching. Bye.